everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the Brashid podcast, the official podcast of the Assyrian Church of the East from the Metropolitan Sea of Sydney. My name is Isho, and I'm joined by Andrew and Shaheen. Each week we'll be discussing various topics on scripture, liturgy, and apologetics, and hopefully we can mutually benefit from this. From time to time we will also feature various guests from sister churches and other religious organizations uh, to further deepen our understanding and ecumenism and hopefully this is a you know a benefit positive yep, for definitely. all of us here. Yep. So um, I think it's fitting to start off with a Bible verse. Yeah, sure. First of all. No worries. Um, from 2 Timothy 3, 16, verse 17. Yeah. So uh, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equi- equipped for every good work. Okay. Now, I don't think there's a Bible verse that's more fitting to the aim of exactly. 100%. It, it yeah. completely it shows the power of the Word of God and the importance in our day-to-day lives, yep. you know? Yep. Um, I think the way I want to put this is we can't see the Bible as just like another book. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, yeah. It's the living Word of God. Yeah. It's it's meant to be a crucial part of our lives as Christians. Yeah. yeah. It's our morning, it's our evening, it's our day. Mm-hmm. It says, the Bible also says, if you focus on it, if you meditate on it, you'll be straight in your paths. Yeah, 100%. I so, mean, yeah. Good. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, like it is sad. You see some people like they'd purchase a Bible and then they keep it up like on a shelf and it collects dust not being used. So um, I feel like that's treating it as like, an ordinary book, not as the living word of God. So And it happens to the best of us. Exactly. Like, exactly. Not, I'm not, we're not saying a specific, um, a, a specific population or, you know, yeah, if yeah, people definitely. do this, yeah. but it happens to the best of us. Yeah. You know, we yeah. forget our way of life. Yeah. I'm not going to say the Bible, mm. I, we forget our way of life. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Bible is the way that we should live, not yeah. the way that we are recommended to live yeah. or not the way that, you know, like just a bit, but fully live. We should fully yeah. live yeah. the Word of God. It's it's give, life-giving and it instructs us on how to live as Christians and disciples of the Lord. Yeah. yeah. I think this idea of it's just a book or where people don't take it fully it's um it doesn't see as a revelation from god when it is where god himself has revealed his some some of his characteristics i don't want to say all of it because god you can't he can't reveal everything to us yeah of course Uh, whatever three kilo brain yeah but it starts from the beginning of time he reveals himself we see in genesis and it goes through on but then the completion of all of that comes through his his son jesus christ where he reveals in human form yeah his characteristics his power and ultimately he paid for our sins on the cross 100 percent. you know um and being the way of life it's going to adjust the way we live as earthly human beings yep. so we might pick up habits we might pick up you know things that are foreign to the bible um and this is natural as humans we yep. do pick up based on where we are, based on who we're influenced by. And it's hard not to be influenced, especially yep. in this generation of social media and, and everything. So we pick up habits and we do things that we might not know are actually wrong, yep. but we still do them because we think they're right. And what the Bible does is, because it's a way of life, it corrects these things. Yep. That's a, a beautiful aspect yeah. of it. It corrects us. Just like a father from a child from his young age his father will discipline him or teach him slowly, slowly, this is wrong, yep. this is right. And slowly, slowly, that kid gets up on his feet, starts walking until he becomes a teenager and then an adult. Exact same thing with our faith. Yep. We start off as babies in faith. Mm. We start off as infants, not knowing what's right or wrong. And then the Bible slowly, slowly corrects us. And the important thing to understand here is as the Bible corrects us or as we hear you know, a priest or someone that is preaching the gospel or the Bible. And we might take it as offense because he's saying something foreign to what we do. This is not how we should see it. We should see it as a child learning from their father. I think lots of people are turned away from that. As soon as something's uncomfortable, they don't want to hear it anymore. I myself 
And I'm sure you. I think every human yeah. is like every that. Human. Yeah, yeah. When Everyone. something's uncomfortable, we, yeah. we tend to turn away from it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think, you know, when they say if it's hard or it's uncomfortable, you yeah. keep going yeah. and you'll get over it. Yeah. It's like um, when you're learning something new, it's like a learning curve. Yeah. yeah. Like that. Um, if you just sit and listen, you find out, wait, maybe this is correct and I've been wrong. Mm. Or maybe oh, this lines up to what I thought. Or even um, it's hard now. It'll get better. It'll get better. Yeah. yeah. And we'll get closer to God. Gold. Yeah. Um, Do you take it straight out of the mine? No. Out of the dirt? And you have a beautiful chunk of gold. No. It says one kilogram on it. No. What happens to that gold? It goes through a furnace. Gold. It's got to get purified. Yeah. It is put in a furnace. Mm. Burnt. Yeah. Melted. Purified. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing as us. We enter as babies. Slowly, slowly, we get straightened. We might wobble off the path, but that's the role of the Bible. Exactly. It puts us back into perspective. Every time we move or sway aside, it puts yeah. us back into perspective. Now, I guess um, I get, uh, building up on what you said, like uh, the way we're influenced by media, like in this day and age, it's really easy to like turn away from God or not so much turn away, but like distance yourself from God. And then, yeah, like the Bible can be used as like something to bring you back because yeah, like it will set out um, set out like a proper way of life for you to follow and then obviously get back on track onto the, onto the right track. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, On the getting back on track, um, I guess turning away from what the world thinks and what the world cares about. First, this starts with like the Bible says in Lamentations, the book of Lamentations, verse chap- uh, chapter 3, verse 40. Mm-hmm. says, let us examine and probe our ways and let us return to the Lord. And I guess that's what comes first. You've got to examine yourself before yeah. anything. Yeah. Examination, seeing what's what's good about you, what's bad about you. Must, what's foreign from the word of God, from Christianity. Mm-hmm. And then the process of purification comes. Then the process of, like we talked about yeah. the gold, going through the furnace, going yeah. through the trials to make you as sanctified as possible. Yeah. Have you ever scraped your elbow or your leg, but you didn't realize? Yeah. And then a couple of minutes later, your friend comes up to you and says, look, there's a there's a scratch on your arm or there's a scratch on your leg. What is that? That's your friend telling you what you can't see. Mm. Yeah. Same thing with us. Sometimes we can't see what's wrong with us because yeah. we're so, you know, we're so into the earthly ways and it makes us feel comfortable yep. knowing that we are the same as you know non-christians or the the, the norm yeah and then a friend and what better friend than the bible itself comes and says to us you have a scratch we look at it and we say you're right let's fix it if you don't look at that scratch if you don't treat it what's going to happen you'll get an infection yeah that infection will grow and grow and the same thing if you don't fix, if we don't fix our bad habits, slowly and slowly, then it will grow into an infection, and it will ruin our lives. But thank God we have, um, you know, wise church leaders. We have the church. We have the book itself. Like yeah. like the verse says, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's like a first aid kit. Exactly. Yeah. It's got everything in it. I I don't think that you can say there's something missing from the Bible no. in order to live life. No, you can't. Everything from 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, Cain and Abel, everything from the first word, Brashit. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Everything the from the first word in the beginning, Brashit, until now is relatable and applies. Yeah. There's no, ah, um, that was the Old Testament. Humanity has changed. Society has changed. Circumstances have changed. I'm not saying no. We, society has changed. Yep. Of course, circumstances yeah. have changed. Mm. But as there's a verse, um, the word of God never withers like the flowers. Yeah, it stays. It's firm. No matter what, t- as time passes, no matter how much time may pass, the word of God will remain. Yeah, yeah. I think building on that. It is seen as something old, something gone, something past. But I think even though it's some some parts of the Bible are based in more ancient um, society, 
I think the core principles are the same. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Like we have in our society today that are the principles of the Bible. The That's first, how Western yeah. society strives yeah, yeah. compared to others. The first, yeah. um, the I've heard the king of England, I'm not too sure which one. Yeah. Um, they needed rules. They needed, um, you know, foundational rules. So what did he decide to do? He grabbed the book of the Bible and he said, this is the law of our land. Yeah, exactly. This is the law of England. Yeah. Yeah, From now on, yeah. the Ten Commandments. England, England, because it was the center of um, the Western Church. Yeah. yeah, it was completely influenced by Christian Christian ideas, Christian teachings, yeah. because they saw it beneficial to society. And, and even I as a non-Christian, exactly, if you take those, they're yeah. just moral ways of living, yeah. ethical ways of living. Yeah. Even the fo- the founders of America, majority, I want to say maybe half of them weren't even weren't Christians. But they knew that these principles would would establish a country that's free, that allows people to reach their their maximum ability, mm. and to make it the best living country, or they aim to make it yeah. the best country for them. Hundred percent, yeah. Yeah. So I've got another um, another you know thing that we can derive from yeah. this Bible verse because this Bible verse. How many? I think it stems you, you, like you can get one, two, out of it. three yeah. lines. Yeah, yeah? we can sit here and talk for hours and hours, yeah, definitely and hours yeah. about this, but we'll just pick apart some small things that we can share. Yeah, together. Um, I think what this this verse is um, pointing to as well is that that the man of God may be complete so, through the Scripture. Yeah. So. In order to be complete through the scripture, that tells us that we are incomplete without it. Yeah. Right? So if we do not have a sound, look, I'm not saying that we should all be, you know, philosophers. And scholars. Yeah. And scholars. Yeah. Be professionals. Yeah. You know? 100%. Yeah. We yeah. all have different roles in this world. Yeah. But let us be familiar. Let us know what our faith is. Yeah. You know? Let us have the foundation. Exactly. Yeah. The basis to then be able to, to stand strong yeah. in order to, to be complete like the verse says it's not sufficient to, to just be called a Christian yeah exactly. that's a label I can put a label on Andrew that doesn't mean he is that yeah. label yeah right so taking this verse into consideration I think it's very important to be active with the word of God and be ready be ready to give an answer yeah, yeah. if someone asks you maybe that person might ask you a high theological question that's all right. Like yeah. we don't. No one no knows one, all yeah, the answers. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, no one can. No answer. Answers are there, but we don't know them all. Like you them. said in the beginning, and like you said, we can't fill our minds with everything about yeah. God. Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah. Like that. Um, that story. The monk. The monk. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a kid, and he was trying to, you know, with a bucket, He's digging a hole, digging a sand, hole, yeah. and then trying to pour the whole ocean into that hole. Yeah, that was the monk beforehand saying to God please let me understand you and through that vision God revealed to him that no your three kilogram brain cannot understand an eternity eternal yeah. something eternal like there's no end and there's no start it's exactly. eternal non, non-stop yeah. we can't completely understand this all and therefore it's all right you know if you can't answer a question or but be ready to defend your faith at the level you are comfortable with. Yeah. yeah. I think St. Peter, in his first letter, that this verse that I'm going to read, it ties in perfectly with what we're talking about. It says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a, give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and in fear. And I think the last part is very important. We usually see when someone attacks our faith, or asks a question that is designed to make you stumble, make you fall. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. We tend, or when answering back, we tend to have the same attitude where we want to, we have the same attacking attitude. Yeah. So some people, they don't do it to learn from you. Yes. But they yeah. do yeah. it to make you fall. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people out there yeah. that yeah, do yeah. that. There's a lot of, you know, not um, being stereotypical, but it's reality. Like there are people out there that want to yeah. destroy yeah. your confidence in your faith. I mean, because it goes against their thoughts. Exactly. Yeah. Christi- yeah, yeah. This Christianity disables a lot of things from happening that they wish to. It yeah. suppresses, not suppresses, yeah. but it says no to their desires. At home, if you have rules, you can't 
surpass these rules yeah. and do whatever you want. Yeah. That's basically at home. As a kid, your parents say these rules, for example, you can't sleep past 8.30 p.m. This is just a basic example. The kid wants to sleep past 8.30 p.m., yeah? But the rule stops him from doing so. Or and it gives them a guilty conscience. A as guilty well. conscience. Yeah. So when this happens to people that do not want this to happen, as in non-believers, then it burns them. So what happens is they want a guilt trip or they want to make the other person feel less confident about um, it. Doubt. Doubt as well. Doubt. Yeah. That's the main thing. And that's what Satan did. In the, that's the first thing Satan ever wanted to do. He put doubt. He said, did God really say, yeah. do not eat of the fruit? And that, that starts a process. It goes it goes deeper and deeper. Oh, is it this? Is it that? Is it that? But I think what 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 puts doubt away is trust. 100%. And trust trumps doubt. Yeah, no. Yeah, 100% agree with what you've said there. Yeah. Yeah, so to be able to give a reason for hope, we, was, we must know why we are Christians. Exactly. So as we said, we can't just label ourselves as Christians. We have to have that. You know, and we can't say I'm Christian college. because my parents were Christian and I was raised yeah, up that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think the answer should be I'm Christian because because God revealed Himself. Thank you. He showed the way. He showed us through Holy Scripture, written by eyewitnesses. The disciples were eyewitnesses of Jesus. They saw Him. Yeah. Who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So it's not just some guy writing a book. They were moved by the Spirit. They were inspired by the Holy Spirit. There are some, you know, scholars, and some. People that are non-Christian, so people that are not Skeptics of this, stuff, yeah, yeah. not yeah. of this faith, that have said that what is written in this book, this amazing book, the Bible, I do not comprehend how you could possibly rewrite that. The yeah. Book of Psalms, exactly. Yeah, no, I do not poetry beyond anything. Yeah, I I cannot understand how anyone could write that on their own without a strength. Yeah. And luckily as Christians we know what that strength is. Yeah. And exactly. that strength dwells within us from baptism. And we see the message the message goes all the way from Genesis to Revelation. It's the same message. And you wonder from since the beginning of time till now how does how do different authors in different times write the same message with having no interaction with each other? Yeah. And it, the the only way is yeah. Through the Holy Spirit or through divine in, um, intervention. Yeah, that's a topic for another yeah. day to yeah. talk about. We, we definitely will go with that. We'll go city. the authenticity of the Bible and why. And since the disciples were willing to die for something, they couldn't be lying. By people saying that this book is ancient and society has changed, all they're doing is giving evidence that it was. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was. It did happen because they're saying that it was ancient. Mm. Therefore, it is recorded from that history. Time. Yeah. yeah. I guess yeah, like even though it's written like in that period of time, okay, still the messages that are within the Bible like relate to our world today. They've related to the centuries prior to They've us. They've always like, related exactly, to something. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I guess that um that comes back to where we said like um like the writers were influenced by the Holy Spirit. They had the Holy Spirit within them that I guess um was a strength that allowed them to write yeah write like write, write their books in the, the Bible present. The past and the future. future exactly. Yep. Yeah. Because we're not time machines to say to know oh, what's going to mm. happen in the future. Mm. Do you think Isaiah had a time machine in front of him saying this prophecy? This is what's going to happen in the future. No. And it goes into very detail. Isaiah fifty three. Yeah. Exact detail of how Jesus was going to be persecuted. Yeah, how he's going to be on fact, the cross. In fact, I'll pull it up right. Yeah, now. let's bring it up. Isaiah, do you want to bring it up? Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah fifty three is mentioned in Psalms as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think it's Psalm 22. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So this isn't like uh, a guess or it's not, uh, yeah. you know, I, I think this is going to happen. No. Yeah. And I think many Jews have, um, because of this chapter, they've realized that Jesus Christ is their Messiah and he is the Savior of the world because of this chapter, because of the prophecy that Isaiah had. And then again, they were from tradition. Um, you know, this, this would make sense, but it's tradition. We say, there's some say that some people looked at that cross when Christ said, My father, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. From that, they realized. Yeah, we'll, we'll get Psalms, yeah. What we'll they get recite that, yeah. in the temple every single yeah. day. They recite in the temple, My father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And they came to their thoughts. Piecing of the arms. Yeah. Piecing of the feet. Yeah. Ripping of his garment, 
they looked at him and they realized. But yep. because some people, they can be so blinded to the truth that they even that cannot convince them. Yeah. Because it's hard, you know, once you're once you have your mind set on something and you've set on set it so much that you're fully committed to it, it's hard to move you away. And when you're committed to the wrong thing, you suppress the right thing. Yes. Yeah. And I cannot understand how you could suppress something. Not only something so glaringly obvious, but mm. yeah. God the Son of God was on that cross in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so just and goes to show. What you're referring to, I think, is, is Psalm twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. Um it's a long it's a long chapter. It's a it's it's a it's like thirty verses. Yeah. I'll read the short part of it. It says, um, the congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, my clothing, they cast lots. And that's all talked about in detail with, within all four Gospels of the New Testament. And imagine, just imagine this. Imagine you're in the temple and you're saying this. How many times do you reckon the high priests or... The, the uh, scribes have written this. The Psalms was the songbook. Yeah, of yeah, the yeah, until of now the Jews and yeah. until now. Until yeah. now. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you go to Israel, if you go to the um, Wailing Wall, yeah, um, they're holding the book, Psalms. They're reading Psalms, yeah. you know, and they say this time and time again, you know, and knowing that this happened, so th these people haven't seen this happen. Imagine yeah. you're standing in front of the man. Jesus Christ on the cross and you're reciting this in your head what would you feel that's it it's fulfilled yeah. the prophecy has been fulfilled yeah that's that's as a believer yeah you, you feel relieved you yeah know? you feel this this sense of it's my, completed yeah it's completed that's what he said at yeah. the end it's, it is it's finished, finished yeah you? you know but for the blind man you feel bad you feel mm. guilty you feel you feel something's missing you know you feel like something's missing from what I've been thinking this whole time. You know, yeah. I've been thinking wrong about this man, and all of a sudden, not all of a sudden. It's not like they they saw his miracles. You yeah, know? they saw everything he did. They saw his ministry from a thirty year old man who started off performing miracles, preaching, feeding five thousand people, opening the eyes of the blind. They didn't believe. Many didn't believe. Yeah, how are they going to believe Christ on the cross if they don't believe all of this? For some of them, it did turn a lot. They did, yeah, 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 a lot. Yeah, but it was the final. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's the one. Isaiah and King David have been talking about. Going back to Isaiah fifty-three again, I'll just as a prophecy for Jesus coming into the world. Um, I'll just read a short part of it. it. Says, "Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted." But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Amen. And all, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. It captures it perfectly. Yeah. Jesus Christ took our sins. Every, all of God's anger, all of the sins that we had committed was poured on him. The perfect name, the Lamb of God. Yeah. Unblemished, perfect, pure on the cross. The blood which dripped was our salvation. Yeah. The blood which dripped from him. Again, symbolizing, referring back to the Old Testament sacrifices where the blood. Yeah. 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 So not only the, the Psalms are referencing to Christ, but also the tradition, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, when someone sins. What do they do? They bring a sin offering. Well, it depends on how rich you are. Yeah. yeah, it might be a pigeon, but the main thing would be a nice, clean, unblemished lamb. Yeah, you bring them up. The high priest will sacrifice it, and the blood will be sprayed on the people as a forgiveness of the sins. Yeah, what happened on the cross? Exactly. The pure, sinless man, unblemished, Jesus Christ, put on the cross, and his blood dripped on the earth, redeemed us. Cleansed us. Yeah. I don't think anything made us righteous. Made us in righteous. Front of God. In front Clean, of God. Blameless. Yeah. And that's the power of the blood of Christ. That's the power of the gospel and the good news. And exactly. of course, we'll go into that more detail yeah, another sure. episode. Yeah. Yeah. But this is the power of 
the blood of Christ and the message of the gospel. And think, as you said, yeah, as you said, the um, the message has been the same from the beginning. Exactly. And that message is God loves us. And he wants to save us. He, he wants, wants to turn us around. Yep. Just like he pulled yeah. the Israelites out of Egypt, he wants to pull us out of the slavery of Always, yes. always. Yep. Yep. Never ever is God going to abandon us. Never, yeah. Unless we abandon him. And abandoning God is a scary thing. It's like letting go of your father, letting go of your mother as a little kid. It's like walking blindly into a tunnel or a, or a cave. You can't see. You never know what's going to hit you. But having God with us, we hold his hand, is like a light that guides us through. Guides us through anything, not just a tunnel, not just a cave. Life is more complex than that. Life is more complex than a tunnel and a cave. But if we trust God and if we trust his word from the beginning, Rashid, until now, we will be we will succeed in life and we will we will live as Christians according to the Bible. So um we have a Bible verse, John chapter 14, verse 6. Um uh, just a beautiful, beautiful verse to uh, summarize everything. And yep. yeah, uh, yeah, I'll read from there. It says, um, "And Jesus said to him, I 'I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me.' And uh, yeah, that's from John chapter fourteen, verse six. And um, look, what are your what are your thoughts on this? Like, what meaning can you get out of the like Isha average? was putting it? It's the life. I think that's. Yeah. He he provides the life, but he provides the light, like Yeshua was saying, to yeah. hold with us, take us th- through that way. He says, I am the way. Yeah. And to that life of the humble life, that clean life, life that is uh, accepting to God. What John does beautifully here, sorry for... No, it's okay. What John does beautifully here is at the beginning of his um, gospel, he says, in the beginning was the word. And we know the word is... Is Christ. Yeah. In the beginning was the word. And then 14 chapters and six verses later, he says, Christ himself from his own mouth says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the word. Jesus is this living word. And through Jesus, through faith in Jesus, through the word, the good, the good word of the Bible, we are brought to the Father. Yeah. And the Father is ever, everlasting life. So um, it's, yeah. that, that's our purpose for Brashid. So we can we can share this good news, this gospel. Yeah, that, that's what the word gospel yeah. means: good news yep. with the whole world. Yeah, first strengthening our own faith, ourselves and others, and mutually together to get this message out. Because mm. Jesus said, "Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature," because God sees everybody as worthy of not worthy. Sorry, he see, he loves everybody. Mm. He wants, he's not willing that any should perish. He wants everybody to be saved. Yeah. But he can't force them to be with him. Yeah. They no, have to no. choose. Yeah, yeah. It's free. Willing. It's freedom. Yes. It's free choice. Yeah. That's the beauty of God. Yeah. He provides us with everything we need. However, it's all free choice. And, um, you know, a, a, a thing that I want to relate this to is imagine having a, you know, uh, a cure to something, COVID-19. Yeah. Imagine someone has the cure to the COVID-19 and keeps it to himself. Only he gets healed from the yeah. sickness. Everyone else perishes. How selfish is that? Very selfish. Very. I see that exact same way with the gospel. Totally agree. We have the gospel. Sure. We were born into the gospel. So we so, must be yeah. zealous and we must be willing to share this gospel because this gospel is a cure. One thing has to be our desire. Yeah. I think as a Christian, that's... That's our job. Our lifetime, That's you know. Yeah. Yeah. If, if anyone asks you, what do you want to be? I want to share this gospel, gospel with you. everyone, yeah. you know. This is the cure to every illness. Not physically, spiritually. Spiritual. And spiritually is the most important part. Physically, you can heal yourself. Comes and goes. Yeah. yeah. The, sp- the spirit's Spirit eternal. is the important part. And I think um, that with the grace of God, we pray that we will benefit mutually. All of us. Yeah. Us, yeah. all of us. Us three and our guests that come on yeah, every now and then. Our viewers, yeah. And our viewers, um, we can benefit mutually. We share our thoughts and discuss these life-giving topics. Life-giving 
we're giving life. Yeah. Um, and with the grace of God, we can reach as many people as we like because yeah. we don't want to be selfish with this, with this beautiful cure. We want to share it with everyone, and um, you know, it will make our lives better. For sure, if you get many into people, hundred percent, like from Christianity, bad people, deep, bad situation, their whole life, they turn to God. Everything, everything's erased. Up. Everything turns up. Yeah. God doesn't and have a tally. Exactly. You've done this many sins. You've no. done this many good deeds. No. Wiped clean. That's clean the, slate. That's the beauty of his blood. Blood of Christ. You wipe it all off. Yeah. No matter what you've done, we don't earn our salvation. It is a gift from God. Mm-hmm. And I think we should end there. The gift from God. We did not earn it. We do not owe God something. No. It's a gift. Why? The message that started from Brashit in the beginning. God loves us. And that yeah. is the exact reason why we have this. Thank you all exactly. for tuning in to um, the first episode yeah. of the Brashit podcast. Don't forget we, to share. Get the message out. Get as many people watch, listening because, yeah. um, like we said, this program is here to spread the gospel. And the more people we have listening, it can plant a seed that can that can grow into change their lives. Change their life exactly. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Make them grow strong in their faith or maybe even start faith yeah. in someone. Trust in God and to follow him. Thank you, guys. Um, We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Thank you.